Hi everyone welcome to my channel Autocar 09 The F4 Sherman tank remains one of the most iconic armored vehicles in the history of warfare, not simply for its role on the battlefield but for what it symbolized in an era dominated by mass mobilization, industrial might, and global conflict. In 2026, more than 80 years after it first rolled onto the battlefields of World War II, the Sherman continues to be a subject of analysis, admiration, and sometimes even controversy. It was not the heaviest, the most powerful, or the most technologically advanced tank of its time, yet it was produced in staggering numbers, served on every major front, and played a decisive role in the Allied victory. To understand the Sherman is to understand the strategic and industrial thinking of the United States during the Second World War. It was a tank built not for the individual engagement, but for the long war of a war of subtly chains, global reach, and overwhelming force. The Sherman was conceived as a replacement for the M3 Lee and Grant tanks, which were themselves stop gaps and quick answers to the urgent demand for armored vehicles early in the war. The M3 had serious limitations, including a side-mounted gun and high silhouette. The war department called for a more refined, more modern tank with a fully rotating turret and a balance of mobility, firepower, and production simplicity. What emerged was the M4 series, named after General William Tecumseh Sherman, a Civil War commander famous for his devastating campaigns across the American South. The name was fitting, the Sherman would go on to wage mechanized warfare across continents, smashing through the fences from North Africa to the jungles of the Pacific, and from the beaches of Normandy to the heart of Germany. From its earliest variants, the Sherman was a compromise. It mounted a 75mm M3 gun, which was effective against most early war tanks and provided excellent high explosive capability for infantry support. Its armor, while not particularly thick by later standards, was sufficient to stop small caliber rounds and shrapnel. More importantly, it was designed with mass production in mind. Its engine, transmission, and suspension systems were modular, allowing for rapid manufacturing, field repair, and upgrades. American factories produced Sherman's at an incredible passier over 49,000 units between 1942 and 1945. This meant that when one was lost, another could quickly take its place. The Sherman was not built to be invincible it was built to be replaced, in a war of attrition, that mattered more than armor thickness or gun size. Mobility was one of the Sherman's greatest strengths. Unlike the heavier and more mechanically complex German tanks, the Sherman was reliable, easy to maintain, and capable of operating in diverse environments. It used the vertical volute spring suspension system, which provided a smooth ride and simplified repair. Its gasoline engine, often the Continental R975 radial aircraft engine in early models, was powerful enough for most combat scenarios. Later versions featured improved Ford Gaviate engines. On the battlefield, Shermans could keep up with mechanized infantry, traverse rugged terrain, and quickly redeploy key advantages in dynamic engagements. Their speed and agility often compensated for their lighter armor. However, by the time the Allies invaded Western Europe in 1944, the Sherman's limitations were becoming apparent. German tanks like the Panther and Tiger outgunned and outarmored the Sherman in direct confrontations. The 75mm gun struggled to penetrate the thick, sloped frontal armor of the Panther, and Sherman's had to rely on flanking maneuvers or coordinated assaults to bring down heavier enemies. When the Sherman took a hit from an 88mm gun, the results were often catastrophic. The tank's gasoline engine contributed to its tendency to catch fire when penetrated at a trait that turned it grim nicknames like Ronson or Tammy Cooker. American crews were aware of these dangers, but they also trusted their vehicles. They knew that, despite the risks, they had numbers, coordination, and adaptability on their side. To address the Sherman's shortcomings, several upgraded variants were introduced. The most famous was the M4A3E8, nicknamed the Easy 8. It featured a high-velocity 76mm gun, improved horizontal volute suspension, and thicker frontal armor. This variant could stand up better against German armor though it still required tactical advantage to defeat the Tiger head on. Another important evolution was the addition of wet storage for ammunition, 
which significantly reduced the likelihood of fire after a hit. The British also made significant contributions, most notably the Sherman Firefly. By replacing the 75mm gun with the powerful British 17-pounder anti-tank gun, the Firefly became one of the few Allied tanks capable of reliably destroying Tigers and Panthers at range. German commanders were known to prioritize targeting Fireflies first due to the threat they posed.